up in the sky, look at that massive thing, the sun. Even humans at our present six and a half billion are minute relative to that. In the late 1980s, solar physicist Piers Corbin decided to try a radically new way of forecasting the weather. Despite the huge resources of the official Met Office, Corbin's new technique consistently produced more accurate results. He was hailed in the press as a super weatherman. The secret of his success was the sun. The origin of our solar weather technique of long-range forecasting came originally from study of sunspots and a desire to predict those. And then I realised it was actually much more interesting to use the sun to predict the weather. Sunspots, we now know, are intense magnetic fields which appear at times of higher solar activity. But for many hundreds of years, long before this was properly understood, astronomers around the world used to count the number of sunspots in the belief that more spots heralded warmer weather. In 1893, the British astronomer Edward Maunder observed that during the Little Ice Age, there were barely any spots visible on the sun, a period of solar inactivity which became known as the Maunder Minimum. But how reliable oh. are sunspots as an indicator of the weather? Okay. Take care. Bye. I decided to test it by gambling on the weather through William Hill against what the Met Office said was a, you know, a normal expectation. And I won money month after month after month after month. Last winter the Met Office said it could be or would be an exceptionally cold winter. We said no, that is nonsense, it's going to be very close to normal. And we specifically said when it would be cold, i.e. after Christmas and February. We were right they were wrong. In 1991, senior scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute decided to compile a record of sunspots in the 20th century and compare it with the temperature record. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to around 1940, fell back until the 1970s and then started to rise again. When we saw this um, correlation between the temperature and solar activity or sunspot cyclings, then uh, people said to us, OK, it can be just a coincidence. So how can we prove that it's not just a coincidence? Well, one obvious thing is to have a longer time series or different time series. And then we went back in time so Professor Fries Christiansen and his colleagues gathered together astronomical records for the past 400 years in order to compare sunspot activity against temperature variation. Once again, they found that variations in solar activity were intimately linked to temperature change on Earth. It was the sun, it seemed, not carbon dioxide or anything else that was driving changes in the climate. The sun affects the Earth directly when it sends down heat. But scientists have now established that the sun also affects us indirectly by regulating the formation of clouds. In fact, the sun affects the Earth in so many ways that perhaps it shouldn't surprise us that variations in solar activity correspond so closely with the Earth's changing climate. If you had X-ray eyes, what appears as a nice, friendly yellow ball would appear like a raging tiger. The sun is an incredibly violent beast and it's throwing out great puffs of gas and endless solar wind that's forever rushing past the earth. We're in a certain sense inside the atmosphere of the sun. The intensity of its magnetic field more than doubled during the 20th century. 